Did you know that in the Clone Wars Season 1 episode Ambush, the targeting computer is of Corellian design, sharing the same appearance as the one found on the Millennium Falcon? The Arabesh in these macro binoculars reads infrared mode on the bottom and regular mode on the top. The creature that perches on Yoda's finger on Rugosa is a baby Nibre. The fully grown creatures can be seen in various other episodes of the Clone Wars. In Rising Malevolence, we see the introduction of Commander Wolf and his clone troopers, indicated by the wolf muzzles painted on their helmets. The escape pod hatchways on the Triumphant have the Republic logo on them. As Booster and Sinker attempt to restart the escape pod's power, they use dialogue directly taken from The Empire Strikes Back when Han and Chewie are trying to fix the Falcon. The second escape pod, Pod 1977, is named after the release date for the original Star Wars. The firing sequence of the Ion Cannon on the Malevolence is meant to be modeled after the Death Star's firing sequence. In Shadow of Malevolence, a Republic gunship has a Kowakian monkey lizard painted on its side. It was known as the Crumb Bomber, named after Salacious Crumb. The four-legged gonk droid is called a plunk droid, and just like the gonk, it says plunk as it walks around. The chairs at the briefing are normal, everyday office chairs, just like the ones used on the Death Star. The Y-Wings were made to look like fully armored Y-Wings due to the fact that during their development for A New Hope, the Rebels Y-Wings were speculated to be chopped versions of an older craft. In Destroy Malevolence, Anakin's flagship, the Resolute, and all flagships in the Republic Navy are distinguished by their red conning towers. The specialized firefighting battle droids received special paint jobs to resemble our own firefighters' uniforms. General Grievous greets Kenobi with Hello There, which is a callback to Kenobi greeting Grievous the same way in Revenge of the Sith, which is itself a callback to Kenobi greeting R2 that way in A New Hope. The final frame of this episode is the first time all the prequel heroes are shown like this, as they were not all in the same place at the ends of episodes 1, 2, or 3. In the episode Rookies, the clones can be seen with pinup photos of Twi'lek models. Rex and Cody mention a situation they found themselves in on Tibrin, which is the home world of the Ishitib race. Echo receives a bloody handprint on his armor to make him easier to identify, similar to Finn on Jakku. The holographic music broadcaster is called BD-3000, nicknamed Betty Bot. The episode Downfall of a Droid was meant to air earlier. Ahsoka's foolhardy flying was meant to be Anakin's cause to doubt her flying in the previously aired episode Shadow of Malevolence. The episode Duel of the Droids features Skytop Station on the planet Rusan, which is a very important planet in Star Wars Legends, as the site of what was thought to be the destruction of the Sith 1,000 years before. R3-S6's color scheme is based on Dave Filoni's home team, the Pittsburgh Steelers. In Bombad Jedi, the Quazel Ma is based on Macquarie concept art for a swamp slug creature on Dagobah. The episode Cloak of Darkness introduces the Senate Commandos to the universe. In Lair of Grievous, the lightsaber kit Fisto examines was said to have belonged to a Jedi Master Nebo. To show how young Nadar Veb is, he only has one barbel on his chin. Compare that to the mini visible on Admiral Akbar. In the Gungan General, R5 units can be seen serving as guards with blaster rifles attached to their heads. Dooku makes a very rare reference to a deity by referring to Florum as Godforsaken. One of the speeder bikes has a Twi'lek silhouette painted on it similar to the ones used by truckers in the real world. A pinup girl can also be seen on the wall. The top of Senator Karras' staff is meant to resemble the headpiece to the staff of Ra from Raiders of the Lost Ark. In Jedi Crash, Anakin is set up with a ventilator that makes the same breathing sound effect as Darth Vader's mask. While Ayla Secura never mentions her master by name, she's referring to Quinlan Voss, who is undercover at the time of this episode. The design of the planet Maradun originated from Ralph McQuarrie concept art for an unused planet in Return of the Jedi. In Defenders of Peace, General Locke Durd is voiced by George Takei, making him the first star of Star Trek to accept an on-screen role for Star Wars. 
In Trespass, Chairman Cho mentions the Convention of Civilized Systems, which is the first identification of that specific Bill of Rights in Star Wars. Anakin calls Chuchi most impressive, echoing the same statement he makes about Luke Skywalker on Cloud City. 3PO can be seen piloting his own speeder. This is rare, but he drove the land speeder on Tatooine as well. The designs for cold weather clones is very reminiscent of the concept art for Imperial Snowtroopers. More pinup girls can be seen in the episode The Hidden Enemy. This time, it's a Naboo handmaiden. In Blue Shadow Virus, the new queen of Naboo asks Padme to tell the Senate of a possible invasion. Padme says they'll need more proof, remembering in Episode 1 the ineffectiveness of the Senate. The secret laboratory on Naboo was likely built during the original invasion in The Phantom Menace. The underground hallway was modeled after the hallway explored by Luke in Cloud City and was nicknamed the Disco Hallway. In Mystery of a Thousand Moons, the city of Cliffhold is based on Doug Chang's designs for the Phantom Menace, and one of the building's marquees reads Crystal Skull in Arabesh. The episode Storm Over Ryloth features one of the appearances of R2-KT, the pink astromech droid. The tactical droids were first developed for the episode Innocence of Ryloth, although they appeared earlier in the season. They were created to serve as a more capable villain whose model could be reused multiple times. In this scene, the arabesh on the screen reads, Comic Relief. In Liberty on Ryloth, Mace Windu uses his talent for finding and exploiting shatter points to break the glass on a fallen walker's canopy. The Ark of the Covenant can be seen loaded into Wat Tambor's ship. That's it for today. If you want to check out some of my other Did You Know videos on Star Wars Rebels, there's a playlist for you right here. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.